How's it going, sir? Doing well, thank you. Good, good. You guys want any lunch? Oh, uh, no, we've been offered, sir. We oh. would like to talk to you about your salvation, though. Okay. If you'd be interested. Sure. Uh, do you believe that? I mean, uh, it's for you. Uh, ma'am, we really, we really yeah. can't accept the food. Oh, are you sure? Uh, yeah. Well, there's so yeah, much food you. there. Well, it's, it's there if you want it. If you, you don't want to take it. it with you, and then you won't have to. You don't have to eat. It's turkey and yeah. cheese. There's so much food, you guys. We thought we'd be honored if you would kind, take it. Yeah. We're on foot. Okay. Okay. Well. well, if you get hungry, there it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, sir, do you believe that all sinners go to hell? That is the belief. And do you believe? That? Yeah. You do believe that? Uh-huh. Okay, so you believe you're a saint? I believe that I have been forgiven by God. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. So would you agree that the scriptures teach that if we live in any sort of sin of presumption or willful sin, that we're not forgiven? Where would you find that in scripture? Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 would be one spot. Okay, um, what does it say? It says, if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful looking for our judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. So you say you're forgiven by God, and I agree that's the right thing to say, of course. Um, but we need the blood of Jesus, which we would agree on. Mm -hmm. And the scriptures say if we sin willfully, we do not have that. And primarily speaking, sir, if you're familiar, most churches live in sin. Uh -huh. And they even boast about being a sinner. Mm -hmm. Like they say we're all sinners sometimes. Uh -huh. You probably have heard that in your time. Sure. Maybe you haven't. Um, so I appreciate that you say you're not a sinner. Um, but do you really believe that? Because then you say you're forgiven by God, which is good. Uh -huh. But if we sin willfully. so. What's the line? What's the willful line? Uh, premeditation would be one. Okay. Um, anything like such as sodomy. Do we ever do anything unpremeditated? It is possible according to the Bible. Yeah. Okay. Um, but like some things cannot be that, like sodomy. Um, <laughs> I don't. I line. don't commit sodomy. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, but uh, but dear sirs, um, if you'd like to go this way in the conversation, we could, because uh, this gentleman asked, "What's the line?" Mm -hmm. uh, if the Bible does say that something is not to be done in the house of God, and it is, mm -hmm. then that would be a willful sin. Mm -hmm. I believe because the house of God is structured around the Spirit of God mm -hmm. leading the men of God mm -hmm. and these things and women pastors is a big one within the four-square mm -hmm. denomination yeah and so we are aware of that uh -huh. according to four-square and that is a willful sin in our eyes so okay. this man asked what's a line so sure. we, you know give that for so you. it's your interpretation of the Timothy passage then, I, right? I, I, yes yeah okay. 1 Corinthians 14 as well yes mm -hmm. So, what is 1 Corinthians 14? Uh, it's very much similar. Paul uses a similar amount of words, but he talks about like the woman will ask her husband at home, uh -huh. even if she has a question. Sure. Which, it adds a lot of however, intensity, if you will, sure. to her submission in sure. the church. Whereas in Foursquare churches, you have women actually teaching the men, uh -huh. and even called pastors, uh -huh. which is a masculine what about no. the what about the areas of scripture where Paul talks about and commends Junia for her work in the ministry? Okay, uh, Junia is found in Romans 16, if I'm not mistaken, um, and there is debate on whether that is a male or a female. Yeah, back in the early 1300s, there was a man who took it and he changed the name because he felt like a woman should not have been okay. named there. Okay. And the uh, assumption that we have is that the original author. Okay. it as junior okay. rather than juniors right okay so hypothetically if you're correct uh -huh. how would that then relate back to other things that paul wrote such as timothy as you yeah. mentioned i mentioned corinthians yeah how do those harmonize sure because we know that there's scriptures sure. in the bible hard to harmonize sure but they can be harmonized sure, absolutely so how would that be harmonized in your mind yeah there's a couple of different ways that you can go about bye there's a couple of different ways that you can go about that and the way that we look at it within the four square church is a couple of things. First thing is this, is that scripture does not disagree with itself, right? We agree with that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Second thing is, why would God change his mind on anything, okay. right? God okay. uses females throughout the Old Testament okay. to go ahead and enact his will. He has female judges, such as Deborah. I agree with that part right? so far, yeah. These people that Paul goes ahead and says, okay, these are my co-laborers. These are the people, these are the people that are in charge of the church. Lydia, who's the seller of purple in Acts, she was listed as the head of that church. Okay. We also have Aquinas and 
Oh, go ahead. Um, I I'm, don't want to interrupt you, but sure. we don't believe the Bible says she was ahead of the church. Okay, that's fine. Um, I mean, you'd have to show me that. Sure. I'll let that's you fine. keep going. That's fine. I just don't want you to think I was agreeing with that. No, that's okay. Yes, that's sir. totally fine. Um, and so because of all those things, right, because of these different examples that we have, we believe that, okay, why would God change his mind from one point to the next? And so we okay. look at that situation and we say, okay, what was going on in the church in Corinth? What was going on in the church that Timothy was pastoring? And we say, okay, there's something funny about this that he would go ahead and give explicit instructions that way because he doesn't instruct that for every church. He doesn't instruct that in every place, does he? Uh, there are plenty of churches where he doesn't say anything about, hey, women, you gotta, you gotta be silent. Don't say anything. I don't permit you, right? Hypothetically, if sure. I if I look at the way you're saying that, sure. if I were to say that Paul's got to say it to every church, he only said the Last Supper to the Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken. Sure, because but, he was addressing something specific going on there. But the Galatians kept the Last Supper, and I would think that you guys as well keep something called communion. Yes. So if it's in one place, it has to be universal. That's where like the Catholics think they're the universal church, uh -huh. but they're not. Really what that means in Greek is according to the whole. Uh -huh. So like all the churches kept the communion. Okay. They all kept the elders uh -huh. and they all knew that Christ was the head of man. Uh -huh. Or they weren't really the real church and Paul may have rebuked them for that in person. Sure. But it, I guess, so wait, it sounds like to me you're saying, it's just in that specific church, the women were the problem, but in other churches, they could be pastors. Is that what you're saying? Or That is our understanding of the scripture. Our understanding is that Paul was addressing a specific situation in that church. Okay. And we obviously don't agree. Oh, sure. Uh, I mean, they had a problem with that in that church. I, I think that, but he told that to Timothy, who this is a personal letter mm -hmm. to a man who is in the position of authority Pastor under him. Yeah, yep. and so that is not a specific problem. Mm -hmm. That's to a man of God and how to operate the church of God. Would that make sense? One, uh, Timothy. I, I'll disagree on that one, well, but I think I understand what you're trying in, to say. In all fairness, sure. you know, something to consider, I guess, if okay. at the very least. But I, uh, I like what you said that God doesn't change His mind, and we would agree with that. Uh, and that's why Paul said Adam was first formed, then Eve, mm -hmm. and the scriptures say in Genesis that your husband shall rule over you. This yep. is what the scriptures do say. So hypothetically, if there is a woman pastor and she's hypothetically your wife, uh, she's ruling over you for this service. But she's not. <laughs> That's what it should be. I agree with you. Uh -huh. Because of what God said, he doesn't change his mind. Uh -huh. It's well in the Torah that God put men over the people. It's even written in the book of Numbers that the okay. Lord would put a man so over his people. So then why would God choose a female to be a judge? Well, I judge in this case, because there was also another than Deborah, Holda mm -hmm. was a prophetess, mm -hmm. not a judge, but Deborah was a prophetess. Mm -hmm. So you can speak a prophecy without charging a man as like, I'm going to be your shepherd for the day. It's a lot different because Anna is a prophetess <laughs> in the Bible, but she's not ruling over men. She's a prophetess. But her words are being upheld as from God and used to direct people in their understanding of God. Well, and those words that were right? spoken were a judgment, and I also would admit that Deborah called a man to lead in the story. And right? he didn't. And that was a problem. And so what did then she happen, went, right? <laughs> she went along with them. That's I, what, I will say this, yeah. she, also, she also said, she let him know it wouldn't be an honor for him. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. it was because she knew that wasn't her place. Uh -huh. So she was actually being, Submissive. Uh huh. She was saying by that appointing a man well, to undertake this mission from God. Well, by saying like this is an honor for you. Uh huh. You know, this is not. You will be stripped of this honor. This is, you're not going to get credit for what the Lord is about to do. She's basically saying Rather it's not the credit my role. Will be given to. It's not my role. I, I believe that's what she's saying. I disagree with that one because the way I understand it is that she appointed him to go and lead. By God, she received a message, went to him and said, you are to lead. And then he says, whoa, 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 hold on. Only if you go with me. And then, yeah, she calls him out on it. It's like, what are you doing? I'm like, why? come on, because it's not step the up It's not the order between man and woman. That's why. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's out of order. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, during the time of the judges, there was complete apostasy. Uh -huh. Israel was just doing their own thing. And so, yeah, 
Yeah. When, when, when did Israel ever not do their own thing? Well, <laughs> when are we going to, when are, we pick and we choose, right? Well, I will say this, sure. like when they were leaving out of uh, Egypt, uh -huh. you know, it seemed like they were saved then. I disagree when with they, that when completely they first, when they because first, they had to wander for 40 years because of their first, disobedience and their grumbling and complaining left. kept multiple generations out of the promise. I'm talking about when they first left. Yeah. When they first left they and they went to the mountain and what happened? When they first Within 30 left. days of Moses going up on the mountain, they started... I didn't say they didn't backslide. Right, sure. Right, right. That's not what I said. Yeah. Okay. We right. do know that they apostatized. Sure. And the law that they were given had a priesthood of men. That's the law that they were given, which we sure. know there was no if ands, or buts about that. Sure. It came from God. So I agree that God doesn't change his mind. So if I see, for example, Phoebe is a deaconess in the Bible, mm -hmm. we realize a deaconess can have this role without shepherding men uh -huh. because they have to harmonize. The scriptures have to balance. So that's fine. There's things that women can do without teaching in church because uh -huh. we're just told they're not allowed to do that. Okay. It's just like a man's not allowed to be a housewife. It's not like it just goes one way. It's sure. not a feminism or chauvinism. It's just a biblical. Sure. Like Jesus had to listen to the Father, uh -huh. but yet Jesus gives orders to us. Sure. But he had to be under that headship as well. Sure. You know, so, and unfortunately, it's just not something that happens here. And I know you have your ideas about First Timothy, mm -hmm. but it was contrary to your initial idea. And I hope you would think about that. Like this church has a problem, but it may be not in Galatia. Maybe they have good women pastors in Galatia. But Timothy is just for, you know, the man who's like an aged man, an elder, an evangelist. Like this is the standard you go by. Mm -hmm. And it is something that could be followed. It's not impossible. Uh -huh. and, and it does not seem that many people want to break away from it once they've got into it. Sure. And I have a hard time understanding that myself, but that's why we come out here and do what we do. Yeah. So you, that you might repent of that. Oh, okay. All right. That, we just What's got the, on this topic. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. What's the reason for the recording though? Uh, we've had the police called on us in this city. Oh, and gotcha. We've been accused of trespassing. I gotcha. Um, well, so it's, you don't worry about that. We won't do that for you. <laughs> I, I hope not. I hope not. Um, but it's for everyone's protection, really. Sure. You I know, gotcha. And, uh, it's one of the reasons for okay. sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just from a uh, broad level, you know, without getting into specifics, sure. you do have to be perfect. So we appreciate that you said you're not a sinner. Most people uh -huh. actually don't say that. Uh -huh. uh, do you feel like you're perfect? Well, God says be perfect, therefore as I am perfect, right? Right, right, right. right. It pretty much, yeah. yeah. And you you fall in that category? Yeah, morally, yeah. Morally? Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, cuss at people. I okay. don't uh, cheat on my wife. That's good. <laughs> uh, I don't steal. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, bear false witness. Sure. Um, I mean... The uh, gentleman asked about, you know, uh, ignorant sin. I mean, sure. that could happen, but sure. if I'm ignorant, I'll What do you feel about the story it. of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery? What do I shouldn't, feel about shouldn't it? Shouldn't she have been stoned? Shouldn't Jesus have said, yeah, go for it, right? Yeah. What do you think about that he, one? He, you know, the interesting thing about that story is it actually says in the story, uh -huh. if you're without sin, cast the first stone. Sure. And none of those men could hold uh -huh. up to that. Yeah. Whereas the, and then Jesus was there. Yeah. He very easily could have cast stones, right? Okay. He could have begun it. But he says, is there no one here to condemn you? She said, no, no one's here left. Okay. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Okay. Right? If you would like, I can give you my answer for that. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, no problem. In the Torah, it actually teaches that the witness, mm -hmm. witnesses, excuse me, by two or three witnesses, sure. that they would first cast the stones uh -huh. and then the rest of the people. Sure. So if the witnesses do not do it first, uh -huh. Jesus would have been contrary to Torah to actually do uh -huh. it. Um, so he didn't. You think that was his purpose in saying that to everybody? I, I would think so because he did keep the Mosaic Law. Not that we have to keep like the Sabbath, but he did. Very pretty. Um, not, the, uh, not in the eyes of the religious leaders at the time, though, right? No, but what he <laughs> but, but it, what he said though was smart because he used it as an opportunity to convict them. Sure. And that they went away sorrowful, being convicted by their own conscience, sure. paraphrasing, but so it did do its purpose. Okay. And then he did tell her not to sin anymore. Okay. Sin no more. And because sure. he's going to come back and with fire. So it's not like he's against having someone die who's dead sure. in sin. He's not against this idea. Sure. Or else he'd be against the father sure. who's sending him back. Sure. So, but yeah, that's how that story goes in our view. Okay. Um, he, 
he didn't come to change anything, like you said. God sure. doesn't change his mind, but sure. he came to fulfill. Sure. And that was at the cross. Yeah. yeah. And he said it himself, right? He said he it did himself. not come to abolish the That's law, right. but to uphold, yes, to sir. fulfill the law. That's right? correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like we have a few different, yeah. <laughs> you know, perceptions on a couple of things, but, sure, sure. you know, hey, it's all going to get sorted out one day, right? Oh, it will, yeah. The great thing is, I, and from my perspective, you guys might disagree, but from my perspective is we don't have to have it all understood perfectly, but God will sort all things out in the end, right? Well, yeah, we don't believe that you have to have a doctrinal perfection. Sure. Uh, but to move toward it, like it says in Hebrews 6, but you must have a moral perfection today. Sure. And that's why our science is what it says, because the immortality, like immoral acts, sure. it does have to be condemned. Sure. All right. Yeah, I mean, it, the Son of God sure. will do it. Yeah. Concerning doctrinal perfection, it's like you don't know all things. Right. You know, you're, you're learning. Yep. But you're not speaking the wrong thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, that would be Harris. Yeah. 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 All right. I mean, do you think there's any chance that you would walk away from the women pastors? Not a chance. <laughs> not a chance? I mean, you really don't think so? No, I no. I mean, you're not at all. Nope. She's not over a man. Well, that's what a pastor is. Right? Yeah. Is someone who's yeah. shepherding men. That's like the definition. There were women deacons and women speakers. There, there was a woman deaconess. We were talking about that. But like a pastor in the New Testament, like in the Greek language, is only in the masculine form. So... You know, there was no female apostles or anything like that, because it's just men. It's like saying that there's female angels. Like someone, people actually believe that, mm -hmm. but it's not found in the Bible. Sure. They just believe it, sure. and that's a choice, but it doesn't make sense with the Bible sure. based on the genders. Right. If yep. that makes any sense. I mean, like a pastor is a male title. Uh -huh. like that's in the... Like Ephesians 4, he gave some apostles, some prophets, uh -huh. some evangelists, have a good day, sir, some pastors and teachers, sure. and they're all men, sure. which would make sense because then they can just function right in the church as sure. the Spirit leads them. Sure. And a woman as a prophetess or uh -huh. using tongues uh -huh. would never, from even biblical examples, she doesn't have to shepherd men to do that. So God has granted her that oh, space to do that. Oh, is it Ananias and Sapphira? Okay. Well, yeah. 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 Married couple, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the woman's name is comes first. Okay. Another plan. You're actually talking about Priscilla. Oh, thank you, Priscilla and Aquila. Yeah. Thank you very and much. Yeah. in other places, uh, Aquila is mentioned first. Sure. Okay. So sure. I, I guess you're supposing that that day Priscilla was leading when she's mentioned. Is the, that what you're the saying? The understanding, the thought, okay. the thought process is that with the woman being named first, that's okay. an odd thing goes against the normal convention of the day, meaning that okay. she is in charge. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, why would we assume the normal convention then of the day? Like the normal convention of the day is founded by the Bible, you think, or by that culture? Or? I think it's largely by the culture. Okay. Largely by the ancient understanding of things, right? First century. Okay. A lot, of, right. a lot of different ways to go about things. But my question is, why would the Bible break that convention? Well, I don't think being named first, because she's not always named first, uh -huh. I don't, personally, I don't think it matters myself. Because okay. if Aquila's named first, it doesn't make me believe like he's an apostle or something uh -huh. or anything like that. It's just the way it reads. Sure. And then when the whole thing's opened, he is like the one that spoke about. Yeah. When they're introduced, he's the one that's really spoken about. Sure. And she obviously was a godly woman. Uh -huh. And she followed her husband. Mm -hmm. Few women do. Uh -huh. But it does not say that she was shepherding like Apollos. Sure. So you think it was just random that the author wrote it in that way? I would say that was that's a random thing. It's a choice. So that, not inspired by God, not God breathed, not Well, it's definitely inspired by God, okay. but if God just says write this and he wrote it. Do you think God had a purpose with that? Well, again, if I think that there's a purpose with that, when Aquila is mentioned sure. first, are their roles changing? Uh -huh. Are there, obviously we know their genders can't. Sure. So like, <laughs> right. Well, so, <laughs> we can agree on that one. Right. So then it's like, what are they? Yeah. What are, are they just disciples? Are they pastors? Uh -huh. And I, again, I go to pastor being a masculine. The reversing or not reversing of the order of the names, I guess I don't know where I would get a doctrine from that. Okay. Um, and 
I could look up in the scripture if it's used like that in other places for other couples sure. to see if I could derive something. Sure. But I guess if I'm looking for a doctrine, would I get it from that? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I think it points to an idea. Well, that's from your oh, perspective. Yeah, I will yeah. say this in First Corinthians chapter 11, it gives actually the doctrine between men. Okay. It says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. So uh -huh. that's the headship order. Yeah. And so if you have a woman that's not even supposed to be speaking uh -huh. in the church, she's supposed to ask her husband questions at home, mm -hmm. but now she's in a position where she's correcting men and teaching them doctrine. Mm -hmm. How does that fit into the headship role and how does that, and how does that cause that woman to obey uh, the fact that she's not even supposed to be speaking or asking her husband a question? Yeah. I mean, how does that, how does that, how does that work yeah. with those passages of scripture? Yeah, I think as we talked about all the other things, we take scripture as a whole view and we look at everything all together. So what was the reason for that, right? What was the occasion for that? Was that spoken for just that singular moment or was it spoken for all of eternity for all people everywhere, right? There's a mix okay. of history. There's a mix of history and instruction. In scripture right there's a mix of yeah. we're dealing with this issue right now right in this moment yeah. and then there's also this is for everybody forever and okay. it's up to us we have to figure out where those parts are and that's part of the hermeneutics of scripture that's part of the exegesis of scripture is figuring out okay was God speaking to everyone for all time right now or was he speaking to a specific event in this present day that was not correct and there was something horribly <laughs> wrong here that needs to be addressed well I have a question sure. for you it says it was an ordinance that he had delivered. So uh -huh. it's an ordinance that he delivered to the church. Sure. Now, are, do you remember what happened with Moses when he wasn't, when he didn't circumcise his son, what was gonna happen to yeah, him? Yeah, he was gonna get killed. Why? Why? That's a good question. I assume because the Lord's anger burned against him, right? Was that what it was? There was an ordinance uh -huh. of circumcision. He was going to die if he did not keep that ordinance. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is, here it is, Paul's giving an ordinance to the church. And so- That it, Christ would be the head of the church or that a husband would be head over his wife? Well, it's, it's both, the way, yeah, yeah it's, you it's think ordinance. It's, both? it's ordinance. Okay. Okay, and so he's telling the people the structure of the church of how it's supposed to run. Sure. And so if Moses could die, if he didn't obey the ordinance, sure. what happens to a person that's professing to be a born again Christian, uh -huh. say, says they have the spirit of God, uh -huh. but they're disobeying the ordinance of God. Yeah. It's willful sin. They die uh -huh. spiritually. Uh -huh. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. What did God tell Adam? He said, the day that you eat of this tree, yeah. you, do it, you will die. So sure. the person dies spiritually if they're disobeying the ordinance. Sure. And they know it. They've been taught it. And they reject it. They're, dis they're disregarding God's sure. order. Sure. And they're just kind of doing their own thing. And sure. So, yeah, because they're, they're, the they're putting a woman in a position to usurp authority over man. And yeah. that's not God. That's uh -huh. not the Holy Spirit. Sure. Yeah. And we would all be in one spirit of one accord, right? How yeah, does the, yeah. uh, how does, how does, how does that view, how is that rectified within the new revelation of Jesus Christ, though? Right? As far as the women. No, not the women, but the ordinances, right? So this ordinance, God was going to kill Moses for this thing, right? Jesus came, fulfills the law, yeah. brings about forgiveness, preaches about forgiveness. I have not come to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world, right? He did say that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the, when he didn't come into the world to condemn, he didn't come with fire. Okay. But he comes next time to condemn the world. Sure. So it's not in impossibility it's uh -huh. just first second coming uh -huh. john 9 he says i've come for judgment for uh -huh. this reason it says in john 9 you can read through i think 39 through 41. okay so for this cause he came into the world for judgment mm -hmm. that if you know you're blind you might see mm -hmm. and if you think that you see and you're actually blind that you know you might be blind you sure. know so and ordinances that the apostles gave mm -hmm. were commanded from jesus okay so I guess I'd have to know more about your question then after that. Sure. Like, so I guess, what are you getting to exactly? I mean, he didn't come into the world to condemn it. Right. But he sure rebuked the Pharisees pretty hard. Sure. Uh, and that's a word of condemnation, but it wasn't a physical 
Day of the Lord's Slaughter, uh -huh. but that's coming. So why would, then would we be condemned right now if he has not given that to us? Well, I think it goes to like the pharisaical rebuke is like we go by words. Okay. Like Alexander the coversmith has done me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Okay. I mean, Paul blasted him. Sure. And he was just being honest, sure. but it is blasting some sure. for the, you know, our type of language. But he laid it to those people like this guy, Alexander, he'd done me evil. Sure. But he didn't like go out and kill him or something. Right. But the Lord may have smote him dead that night or something. It's possible. And, and yeah. he's in hell. <laughs> so we're not like condemning you in that way, obviously. Okay. But we are saying it's sin. So you, but but what you're saying is, is that we're acting in willful sin because yeah. we believe that women can be pastors, and so therefore we're going to be damned, right? Yes, because we're not perfect. That we we do sure. believe that, sure. And that's we're actually here out of love, sure. Despite what people think about us, oh, that's sure, what sure, we sure, believe. Sure. sure. That the second great commandment is to tell your neighbor uh -huh. about his sin, yeah. like it says in Leviticus 19, 17 through 18, which is not uh, Mosaic law. It's a law that Paul later quotes in Galatians, to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you ever saw someone sinning uh -huh. and it's going to send them to hell, the best thing you can do is tell them to stop. Yeah. Have faith in the Son of God. Yeah. That's a nice thing to do. And it is biblical as well. Yeah. But just because of Leviticus, some people would think it's not New Testament. Sure. In James chapter 5, you know, toward, towards the end, you know, if a brother do err, uh-huh. He needs to be converted again. Uh -huh. yeah. So you can help get him. You can yeah. help save him. Yeah. You can bring that. You can come back to the fold. Sure. In it. And you, you, know? you guys are of the opinion that the women pastor thing, that's the issue. Well, that's, that's the thing, right? I, I would say that the Foursquare Church has different things that we agree on, like sure. the Godhead. I don't sure. think either of us believe once you're saved, you're always saved, from uh -huh. what I remember about right. Foursquare beliefs. Uh, we're probably contrary to you on. Uh, sinful nature. We don't believe that we're born a sinner or anything. Most churches do believe that. It's a okay. different conversation. But as far as what we know sure. and having a lot of experience with Foursquare, uh -huh. then yeah, I mean, that would be the thing that we felt led that sure. here we have an authority to preach this in uh -huh. love to save souls. Sure. We're not evil surmising. Sure. We're not trying to dig into your personal lives. Sure. We just know this is the denomination. Sure. And so, yeah, I, with what you said, yes. Sure. I gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, hey. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was your name? My name is Ray. Ray, Josh. Nice to meet nice you. And you are? Sir. All right. Well, you guys have a good day. Yes, sir. I got to take my kids to a piano recital. Um, <laughs> the, the, the food where I'm, I'm not actually going to eat the food. Sure. I mean, it was nice for them to bring it. Sure. I don't want to see it go to waste either. Sure, though. sure, sure. So if whatever you guys feel is best, because it is your food. So I don't. Okay. If you feel it's best to take it and someone sure. can enjoy it or something. Feel like you can't partake with sinners? Hey, you know how it is, though, sir. Like if the Mormons came to you uh -huh. and said, "Come in," uh -huh. I mean, you're, you know the Bible. Uh -huh. You have a good amount of head knowledge. Yeah. You're not gonna fellowship with Mormons, I don't think. Yeah. You might, but we would say it's wrong. Right. But like, you see what people do? Sure. Because the Mormons want to come and sure. knock on your door, cut your grass sure. for you, and all that. Sure. You know what they're doing. Jesus ate with sinners. He did. He invited them to the table. He said, hey, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house, right? What Paul said was that with such a brother, do not even eat, right? Yeah, yeah. Somebody, Christian brother. Who yeah. is professing to be a brother. Who is yeah. professionally to be a brother. And we know that person was jacked up, right? Big yeah, time. Yeah, Sleeping with his mother-in-law. Right, right, right. And the church was holding this up as some good thing. As like, wow, look at the freedom we have in Christ. Like, Okay, we can agree that that's kind of messed up, right? And that goes to all churches. Though. Sure. Yeah, right. Well, so, well right. obviously. Exactly. So, 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 so in that case, that's really jacked up. Yeah. And that is true. Yeah. So in that case, don't eat. Jesus, I think, obviously was around sinners yeah. for their salvation, uh -huh. which it means that we're allowed to drink water with you or sure. have a pretzel. Sure. Like, but here is your church. Uh -huh. Here is where you, I think, personally, after your pastor came up, uh, sure. first man, he would have rathered we say that you're a great guy, let's yeah. come in and fellowship. Sure. I think he would have rathered that. Sure. But it's just not the way we operate, of course. And sure. we follow like what you brought up 1 Corinthians 5. Sure. So in that case, no, we cannot be in okay. one mind. Like you right. said, one mind. Sure. That is very important. Yeah. And we would appreciate that you said that. Sure. And, uh, you know, we stand in different minds. Sure. So that's why with the food, I don't want to see just like. Sure, I understand. Rod here I understand. Either. 
waters. You guys cool to take that? Jesus uh, said, I th- cup of cool water in my name, right? Hey, and my brother right. said that she did a good act by doing that. Yeah. You know, so I, I think we'll take the water. Okay. Out All of right. goodwill. Yeah. Out of goodwill. Sounds good. And, All right. And the food, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I, I can, I can, uh, we can lift this up for you here. Right. And, uh, thank you. But yeah, I mean, as far as everything is concerned, sure. yeah, I, I have. Mean, cool. I mean, <laughs> we really do care about you. Sure. You know, and I, Anything else we could well, talk that's the about. Only, that's the only reason that you guys would come out, though, right? I mean, that's that's the reality of it. A lot of times people observe these things. Hi. Hi. A lot of times people observe these things and they think the opposite. And, it's, you know, sometimes it's our way, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, we don't have a denomination uh-huh. and we don't do this for money, you know? Yeah. So, like... We do appreciate that you gave us a chance to talk. Sure. We appreciate that. We appreciate the pastor for not calling the police or, sure. you know, saying that it's public property. So we appreciate these man-to-man things. Sure. We do. Yeah, absolutely. For the record, I'm the pastor, by the way. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that, he said he's been a minister for 43 years. So oh, yeah. As, Scott, he's the he's the worship minister here. Yeah, so yeah. he is, uh, he's a minister. Yes. Here. Yes, okay. he is. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. Did we not no, that's show okay. any disrespect to you? No, I didn't. I didn't take it that way. Yeah. At all. yeah. He, he took the label, if I wasn't mistaken. I think you asked me. He referred, he, 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 yeah, Pastor yeah, Scott. He is yeah. licensed. He's okay. a minister. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I did ask him. I think I asked him if he was an elder, and he yeah. said yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's, so, that's fine. I got you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do think by God's grace we might come back, uh-huh. so we can maybe chat again. Uh-huh. And uh, if not, I guess we'll preach and mm-hmm. we'll see how it goes, and right. hopefully we can keep a good report. All right. All right. We'll see you around then. <laughs> okay, All right. Yes, sir. Take care, guys. Yeah. Have a thanks, good one. guys. Yep. Have a good day. Plus, if you guys have anything you'd like to discuss, sir, was there anything you wanted to talk about more? I was just listening. Yes, sir. I wasn't sure if you had anything. You're good, too? Education. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. I don't don't find agreement with everything. Sure. But it it all sounds biblical and due to interpretation, and some of it not. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, if there's anything we can at least, like, give you our, you know, thoughts on, we'd be happy to do that before we walk off. That's okay. I do take my direction from the pastor. Okay. All right. Thank you for showing us there is other things. Uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you for being so nice and listening. You're welcome. Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. Have a good day, sir.